As Parliament prepares to rise for the summer, the apparent communication gaps in Minichino's office are just the latest example in a series of information breakdowns in the government. Here to unpack the political impact of that is the Sunday strategy session. Kathleen Monk is a former NDP strategist and director of communications to the late Jack Layton. James Moore is a former Conservative cabinet minister and Scott Reid is former communications director to Prime Minister Paul Martin. Hi everybody, good hey to there. see you. Kathleen, uh, in your view, is there a way out of this for Minister Minichino? Well, I think that, first of all, it's important to note that for the opposition, when a scandal like this breaks, the first thing they want to go to is for to demand a resignation. It's the easiest, it's the lowest hanging fruit. It's easy to get out in question period and in scrums. But I think that what they are avoiding in, in asking for his resignation is they're focusing on a process as opposed to what really happened and how could we make this better for Canadians. I think what would be interesting to know is what would it have been like or what could have Minister Mendicino have done if he had the access to the information three months earlier? Why didn't staff in the department or his political staff give that information to him? And I think he could have drilled down and started that investigation earlier as to why the transfer was happening. He could have, for instance, informed the families. He could have created a protocol so we were ensuring that the victims' families were informed and that they had the supports they needed when it came and the story of this notorious killer broke in the media about the transfer. So I think there were major failings here. And I think if Mendicino is going to survive this and frankly the prime minister's office as well because there certainly is culpability there they're going to have to come out with a strong statement about how they're going to move forward and how these kind of like continual uh communication failures this breakdown um, of communication that's happening whether it's minister sajan's office whether it's minister blair's office or frankly minister Mendicino, is not going to happen in the future the prime minister should have a long time ago said we've got to learn for our, from our mistakes folks we've got to learn when this keeps on breaking down this communication keeps on breaking down we've got to get better we've got to do better for Canadians and he hasn't done that yet I think part of the reason why in this instance and it's I'm, I'm not saying whether you know it has merit or not the, the opposition did jump where it did and the Tories in particular uh, James is because this isn't a one-off in particular with this minister or on the issue of competence lately with the government Yes, and the uh, rhetoric of saying a minister needs to resign is not something that opposition parties should go to with regularity. And, and the Conservatives and the NDP and the Bloc, for that matter, haven't done that through the sweep of this parliament. W let's not forget the Minister of Public Safety, whoever it is, is responsible for the Canadian Border Services Agency, the RCMP, anti-terrorism legislation, dealing with mass casualty incidents like we had in Nova Scotia. And the capacity of effective communication that is trusted by the public is not a capacity that's ne needed in all portfolios, the president of the Treasury Board, minister of the environment, you know, like you don't have to be a brilliant communicator and with, with credibility and trust with the public. But minister of public safety, you really do because you are entrusted with privileged and confidential information that is fundamental to the, to the safety and security of everyday Canadians. And when you've lost that trust, when that faith is broken and it's been broken multiple times with this minister, that is not something that can be repaired. Mr. Mendocino may have many... Uh, capabilities and many skills. He might be a decent minister in a different portfolio, but his time in public safety, I think, really does need to end. Again, it's not a political hit, but because that capacity of trust and faith has been broken multiple times. And in this portfolio, that's not something that can be sustained. What do you think of the, the communications around this, uh, Scott, and did it make it worse? Essentially, by that, I mean, you know, uh, not being able to explain why there was that gap in communication, uh, then announcing some new directives. But kind of running away from reporters as they tried to ask some additional questions. Like, it, it, it sort of eventually painted a bit of a picture, I think. Well, it certainly didn't look wonderful. Um, look, I, I think there's more than one pattern here. And, you know, I guess I should just be direct in saying that Marco Mendocino was a friend of mine, so take that all with a grain of salt. But the pattern that I find just as alarming is what Kathleen was talking about. I mean, you know, you've got Jody Thomas, a national security advisor, saying that, Sensitive intelligence information, whoops, seemed to have gone into a black hole. Bill Blair can't explain why he's not being briefed on sensitive intelligence issues. We've seen other challenges around this. We've seen this incident with Mr. Mendicino's office, which I, if his senior political staff do not have the political acuity to recognize that the release of Pinar, Paul Bernardo into a medium security institution is cause for a meeting, then they ought to be out of those jobs and hanging wallpaper somewhere. Mm. But this broader issue, of uh, the flow of information, the political judgment that's applied to it, the manner in which things are treated with urgency that require essential decision-making. Like, 
the gears, the pistons, the pins in this machine do not seem to be functioning properly. And I don't know if that's a culture issue, a mechanical issue. I don't know if it's a personnel issue, but it needs to be fixed. Is it a political issue eight years in to a government that's going to be up for re-election at some point in the future. Oh, for sure, it's politically damaging. I mean, my colleagues have mentioned it's the con it's the collection, the pattern of different ministers doing this that will damage the liberal brand. But what I find so uh, disturbing about all the revelations we've had in the last uh, couple of weeks about this is that by what right does a political staffer or a departmental staffer have to withhold information from a minister? It is like, I mean, it doesn't take great political savants. It doesn't take Scott Reed's, uh, you know, political issues management skills uh, to, to, to realize that the release of Paul Bernardo, Canada's most notorious killer, is going to create waves. And so the fact that they withheld that information is really troubling. And the fact that this government hasn't indicated to the departments, to the bureaucracy, and its political staff that its job number one is to advocate and defend for Canadians and particularly to the, the victims of these families victims is really really disturbing and that is what will hurt them in the long run but I mean that's sort of my, my question James like around competence I mean following this the minister did say okay victims are now going to be top of the consideration list I have to be d uh, directly brief like he issued it as a formal directive but what does it say at this stage of this government that they have to do that well, I think I'll reiterate Scott's point and I'll package it a little differently. You get what you tolerate, right? What you tolerate will proliferate. And, and, and on a number of files and a number of portfolios, those some many less sensitive than this one, um, this seems to be a pattern with the government. But with regard to this specific case, with regard to Paul Bernardo, the average Canadian who's driving to and from work and sort of hears about this, again, let's not forget and go back to sort of the, 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 the matter that's at hand here. You hear the name Paul Bernardo, immediately Canadians of voting age will say, this guy and Carla Homolka drugged, raped, kidnapped, murdered three teenage girls. And those two, those two killers, one of them is now living a life and out of prison and has been sort of relieved of her punishment. And the other one is now in a medium security prison. And the minister who's responsible for overseeing that didn't communicate that with the victims, didn't communicate that with the public. So it's not just that the justice system seems to be unjust when it comes to supporting victims and in, in one of the most you know violent and ugly murderers in Canadian history. But, but worse than that is that the administration and competence of the system itself has been tested here and has been tested and failed. This assures that criminal justice issues, not just the substance of where people can agree or disagree about what our, what our justice system should look like, but the competence of the management of the system will be on trial in the next election campaign. And I think that's advantage to the Conservatives. Well, and last point to you, Scott, but I think that the fact that, as James laid out, there is such a high level of public awareness of this case. We right. lived through that trial. The majority of Canadians know intimately unfortunately, the details of what that individual committed, like that I, I would imagine amplifies the political impact or blowback of, of what's occurred over the last week. Well, of course, and look, um, Kathleen, James and I have all been political staffers and uh, James himself has also been a minister. Um, I, I think about this specific moment. The minister's not been informed. He is so outraged, like all of us, like any Canadian about this move, that he says, I want to issue an atypical statement, protesting it, saying that I wish to do everything possible. He's outraged, and that statement was unusual. His staff stood there and helped him draft it, knowing that they were in possession of this information months before and had not done anything with him to help mitigate the circumstance. I cannot, as a staffer, understand that. And I know that everybody's piling on to Marco Mendicino, but my God, that is the very definition of a minister who's been tragically, awfully let down to say nothing of the families whose pain is absolutely immeasurable at this entire barnyard farce. Okay, I gotta leave our discussion there. Thank you so much, James Moore, Scott Reed, and Kathleen Monk.